whatsoever. I have no right complaining about this. Eleanor, Maxwell, whatever you were doing to make her scream, please stop, okay? Eleanor doesn't have any any reason to rant either. She has not been screaming all day. She's just been a happy, go lucky baby. She's just screaming. Like we went to the store and the, the employees were just like, Wow, your baby certainly isn't screaming. This is what they were all saying. That's do what they you, were all saying. Do you have a washer and a dryer? Yes. Okay, put her in the dryer. Okay, that's that's a really good idea. I might have to do that. It'll, Never it'll muffle the sound a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. Nevertheless, I will continue to formally lodge my complaint that I have no right complaining about. I will continue, because I'm a professional, I will continue to formally lodge my complaint thusly. <clears throat> they canceled my favorite Christian talk show. They what? They what? They canceled my favorite Christian talk show. And they, I'm upset about it. They canceled your favorite Christian talk show? Yes, they canceled my favorite Christian talk show, and I'm upset about it. Oh, my God. Okay. So let me explain. I didn't think those things get canceled. <laughs> no, let me explain. Okay, there's too much. Let me sum up. I drive 45 to 50 minutes to get to work and then 45 to 55 minutes to get home. I also work five times a week. Now, I'm no math whiz, but I believe, carry the two, that equals about 82 hours of driving a week. Mm -hmm. I might be off by a bit, by quite a bit. And I get bored, so I play around with the radio. I've been playing around with it for the last two years, and and for the last two years or so, I've been vaguely obsessed with AFR, American mm -hmm. Family Radio. AFR Talk, a ministry of the American Family Association. The American Family Association is a Christian organization devoted to steering America back to traditional Christian values. And apparently, that means that all gays are evil and abortion doctors should be jailed and liberals are evil. Yes. Interesting fact, the Southern Poverty Law that Center lists... That affects your family. Yeah, that yeah, all yeah. affects your family. Yeah. Interesting fact, the Southern Poverty Law Center lists AFA as an extremist group because of their very uh, angry and violent attitudes towards gays and Muslims. But I don't trust the Southern Poverty Law Center. I don't like my lawyers to be poor Southern people. No, that's a good point. Yeah. I, 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 I Maybe the Southern have a lot of money because they're successful law center. Uh-huh. That would be that, a good idea. That might, yeah, that I might trust more. So AFR is their radio empire of networks all across the nation that has been very successful in convincing poor rural white people that Jesus wants you to kick poor people off of health care and that you really yes. do need to be shitty to people who sin. Yes. That that's that that's that that's a, a, an important part of Christianity. Mary Magdalene. Who the hell was that? Cough, cough, slut, cough, cough. <laughs> like that Bible story where Jesus is like, excuse me, sinner, I see that you are troubled, but if I help you, that's condoning your lifestyle. Yes. And I can't do that. Hashtag <laughs> Jesus don't play that. Jesus don't play that. <laughs> yeah, that's what Jesus used to do. It's like, hey, you're a sinner. Fuck you. Why don't you just get off of your ass and help yourself, sinner? What's with all these <laughs> poor people doing? They need to get jobs. Then we can all be successful. Like me. My dad's God. <laughs> yeah. So Jesus did say that to the sinners, too. I, I can't help or condone your lifestyle. Wash your own feet, bitch. <laughs> Oh, bitcheth. That's you have the to, original King you have, game. You have to read it in the original Greek to really pick up that, yeah. that that message, his true message. 
And Jesus did say to the sinner, I cannot help you because I do not condone your lifestyle. Washeth thine own feet, bitcheth. <laughs> the Lord. So I'd drive and I'd put AFR on and I would see how long I could listen before I'm screaming at the radio in a rage. It's really fun. Yeah. So I listen to AFR. When corporate radio annoys me, which is a lot, and when NPR gets boring, which is also a lot. Today on NPR, Donald Trump and his increasing list of scandals, his ever-changing cabinet, and the threat of nuclear annihilation. But first, an 11-minute story on soybeans. <laughs> and that is NPR. Yeah, I don't know. I listened to NPR on my lunch period, and it's a 1A. I listened to NPR at 1A, and... I don't remember who the host is, but today was kind of interesting. They have different topics. Today they talked about earthquakes, and your state came up quite a, quite often. Oh hell yeah, we're the hell earthquake yeah. capital of America right now. Just about yeah, yeah, yeah. It's weird. All the earthquakes though happen in northern Oklahoma. They happen. They happen. They happen in Oklahoma City on up. Uh -huh. So Oklahoma City and Tulsa and everything, they're getting a bunch of earthquakes. And people are always like, oh, my God, I heard there was a big earthquake in Oklahoma. Steve, are you OK? Yeah, I slept like a baby. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Plenty of earthquakes, just FYI. Like, you're from Los Angeles. Do you know my cousin Rudy? Yeah. 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 Uh, something's going on in Texas. I, I don't know what, though. A hurricane. Is, is it a hurricane? Yeah. Well, right now yeah, it's, it's a tropical hurricane. It's a tropical storm turning into a hurricane, yeah. I, I, I don't know. They're going to wash noticed... them into the ocean. I know. I yeah, just it's... noticed people I speak to occasionally on Facebook mentioning something, and I noticed that they were from Texas. Yeah. Um. Um. Yeah, it's hitting on Friday, which is why my weekend is going to be a bit dodgy. Ah, okay. Like Saturday and Sunday, I should be getting rain. Probably Sunday. Yes, but it's not going to affect us because we're in the middle of nowhere. Texas and I believe Louisiana are going to get shit. And Eleanor has the TV remote. You really need to be more on guard because no, she will destroy everything you love. Just FYI. And that's what that's called being a parent. Yeah. So how does Texas get hit with a storm like that? Though? Well, well, yeah. yeah, they are on the they are on the Gulf there. Huh. My freaking phone keeps lighting up as if I have a message and I don't have a message and it's driving me insane and I'm going to get pissed off. Maybe it's lonely. So, I guess it just wants attention. Yeah. I like my phone's turning into a cat, basically. <laughs> so for a year or two, I've been listening to shrill, lifeless ice queen Sandy Rios in the morning. Uh huh. She says that she's a warrior for Jesus, but she's basically like Donald Trump's fluffer. Yes. All she does is try to convince Christians that Republicanism is in the Bible. That republicanism is in the Bible. Wow. Yeah, basically, basically anything Donald Trump does, she praises as biblical. Oh, man. Very disturbingly defensive of Donald Trump and his response to Charlottesville. Like, that was suspicious. Yeah. Like, here he is condoning, you know, he's not condoning Nazis. He said that he hates evil in, in all forms. What more do these liberals want? You know who's the real Nazis? The liberals saying, we don't want Nazis. They're the real Nazis. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a bunch of fun. So after Sandy Rios in the mornings, she's on when I'm going to work. And then halfway to work, it switches to <laughs> uh, Financial Matters with New Jersey Guido, Dan Celia. And he talks about the stock market um, from a biblical perspective. Oh my God. How, how exactly does he do that? I don't listen. I cannot listen. I he's And he's like a Guido too. Yeah. So he just talks about markets and takes boring calls and is still blaming Obama for everything. I quickly <laughs> tap out yeah. when it comes to financial matters with Dan Celia. 
Now, on the way home, I would always catch the last 15 to 20 minutes of Nothing But Truth with your host, Craig Durham. Now, don't get me wrong. This guy is an asshat. Yeah. Hillary and Obama and... Seriously, Eleanor! Stop yelling at Maxwell! Stop! You're just straight up yelling. She's been quiet and happy this entire day, and once I started the podcast, she's just, it's screaming time! No, she just wants to yell at Maxwell now. It's just Maxwell yelling time. Are you hungry? She has eaten so much. So, so according to Craig Durham's Nothing But Truth, Hillary and Obama and George Soros are secretly bankrolling Black Lives Matter and their raging war against Donald Trump and the Republican Party with their army of top secret deep state spies. And they're actually helping ISIS along with all the gays and Muslims and yada, 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 yada. yada. Yes. Uh, uh, people like this really do need little tinfoil hats mm -hmm. for when they're hanging out with Alex Jones yeah. and Scream about uh, chemtrails and uh, water that turns the friggin' frogs gay! Wouldn't you like to lock a lot of them in a room and just listen to them argue? Yeah, yeah. That would yeah. be some entertaining shit. We should do, that That should be a show. Yeah. Where, where you, just, you just get two guests from opposing sides who are both fucking out of their minds. Yeah. Like like the flat earthers and the hollow earthers, let them thrash it out for a while. Yeah. Or maybe have like a like a a a, a, a strange um, battle of the network stars reboot. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Finally, uh, scientists and chemtrails battle it out in the survival zone. There was a clip of Alex Jones. I don't know if you've seen this one. It's great. Um, you might have heard about the coffee incident. The what? Alex Jones was filming someplace, and somebody ran up and threw a cup oh, of coffee yes. in his face. But yeah. that was staged. Okay? But after that, there was this guy walking up the street. He was like on just on the edge of the camera. And he flipped <clears throat> Alex Jones off, and he was just kind of going on his way. And Alex Jones went berserk and chased him across the street to tell him to fuck off. And the guy just looks back. The guy is still walking. The guy just looks back, and he is like, I am fucking off. <laughs> <laughs> you are chasing me. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah freaking crazy yeah people are crazy people are crazy yes i just don't understand modern christianity i don't understand how christians can be like i'm a proud christian i believe in the bible and i believe in jesus i also believe that poor people shouldn't have access to basic health care yes mm -hmm. how can you how are christians like how much denial are you <laughs> right now with the Donald Trump presidency. See, the thing, the, how it kind of looks to me is like crazy is colliding. It's kind of like a hurricane. Okay? It's over the Gulf. It starts building up steam, you know, building up power, building up energy, swirling around, all of that. And, and all of the crazy that we have always had is now swirling together and combining. You know, like like 10 years ago, Christians were still fucking nuts. Yeah. But they wouldn't have backed Nazis. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's insane. Now they're literally defending Nazis. So we got crazy, crazy Christians. Crazy Christians. Colliding with Nazis, which they're Nazis. It, it goes without saying that they're crazy. Yeah. Which is combining with the Klan, which has never happened. Oddly enough, yeah. the Klan and the Nazis always hated each other. Never really figured that out. But now they're in the mix. 
your basic you know, Confederate you know, goofball. You say is in the mix. Hold on, hold on, buddy. You say that. Um, yeah, how many years ago Christians would never have ever thought to like back Nazis, and and this is like Hitler was a Christian. Yes. So it makes sense in my head, at least. The Christians are like gonna back this because most Christians are white American men, and then they drive their kids and their wife and their mistress because you know, let's face it, right. they're they're the ones that have five mistresses and three kids that are illegitimate, illegitimate. Right. Um, but they drag them in, and then they they hate the Browns and the Blacks and the Yellows. Right. And the purples, the pinks, and whatever, the rainbows. And so in my head it makes sense. They're well, losing. I'm not I'm not saying They're that losing. there's not reason for the for the crazy to com- be to be combining like this. Well, that's the thing, is, I'm no. just saying that ten or twenty years, maybe more like twenty, Christians would not have backed Nazis. No, but ten or twenty years ago we never thought we would have a president in office who was such a fucking racist. Yeah. The, the the fact that Trump is in office has done exactly what we all knew would happen and has given free reign, well not free reign, but you know, given them permission yes. to go ahead and be openly racist and go ahead and hate without pretending anymore. Mm-hmm. They no longer feel the need and the societal pressure to pretend that they are good Christian people who love everybody like you know Jesus did, the brown person who right. they whitewashed. So they are out there and they're like carrying their little tea torches and the fucking Tiki brand company is there to be like, no, 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 we do not condone this shit. Yeah. Even before the fucking president did. So, I mean, I'm just saying Christians and Nazis go hand in hand in my head. I do I appreciate, I do appreciate that they had said that they, that the only thing they stand for is outdoor patio fun. Right. I love I love some of the companies that are coming out of the woodwork because of this president. Like the makers of Dinty Moore stew would like to say that we think Nazis are bad. Yes. You know? Yeah, it's pretty it's, sad. It's, it's pretty incredible. All mm-hmm. of the companies are coming out and like, no, 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 no. Sorry. We do not we do not do this. We hate Nazis. Yeah. And uh, they shouldn't exist. And the president and still hemming and hawing over there. Like, ah, I don't know. Both sides. Both sides, you guys. Mm-hmm. All yeah. both sides of the president. Which, the makers which of you... Jordan's jeans would like to come out and say that racism sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which which he omitted in his Phoenix rally last night. No, oh, fucking Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Did, you see, did you see the picture on Twitter? Which one? From what? what? I was sure on Twitter. I didn't see the whatever pictures were coming out of that. I didn't see. I saw one picture. And all it said was the Arizona rally from another angle. And it was from the back of the room yeah. where this rally was. And it was like, oh no, 85% empty. Yes. I yes, was just I like, see that. Yeah. Hey! What do you think you're doing? These kids are going insane. But I'm just like, day of life, sweetheart. Yeah. But see, I, I tend to know that when I'm watching him speak, and I'm like, that's a really tight shot on him, and the shot's not moving yeah. to any other angles. Yeah. There's nobody here. <laughs> right. Because if there are people here, they would definitely pull back the camera according to how big the crowd is. Yeah. Oh, and the but- black guy right behind him. Oh, the black guy behind him. Oh, who was the guy who was the guy who was insane? Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. This guy's insane. He's yeah. literally insane. <laughs> that was Love freaking that. off. He reminds me of the uh, the John three sixteen guy. Yeah. <laughs> He's a modern day John three sixteen rainbow wig guy. <laughs> yeah. I await the day that the blacks for Trump guy is. Also gets three life sentences. No, you know what? I'm <laughs> if the the gays for Trump are still going strong, yeah. Because I, we need to look them up. It's a gay couple, and and they are all like gays for Trump, and they carried around that 
the rainbow flag with the don't tread on me state yeah. snake on it. And they would speak out against other gays who were against Trump and try to sing Trump's praises. Yeah. And I'm really, we should look that up. Also, I, I, well, well, Caitlyn Jenner finally turned. Caitlyn Jenner, she was finally like, okay, uh, Are sorry I backed Trump. Uh, <laughs> that was a mistake. He sucks. And I get that now. So I imagine that like, yeah. There's like, a lot of people who back Trump who are like, damn, we didn't realize the depth of his crazy because we yeah. had blinders on. Yeah. Yes. By money. Yeah. But there is still the diehards. And it, yeah. watching the news is kind of funny well, because because they're having a harder and harder time to get, to get right, to get like a real Trump supporter. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. And uh, this is something that I have learned from years of living, you know, in my family. If you say something, you support something and you back it, and then it turns out to be the wrong horse, you will bend over backwards and you will do every fucking thing. You will twist words and you will go to great lengths to find the smallest speck of truth in what you backed yeah. so that you aren't proven wrong. Even when wrong is screaming in your face, they will still say, no, no, no. I back the red horse. I was right. I did the right thing. I'm right. I'm right. I'm right. Like a fucking toddler throwing a tantrum. Yeah. And that's yeah. exactly what's happening now. Even though they can plainly see, and, and Trump is not working even in their best favor right now, like their issues right now with mm -hmm. Trump, they're not being supported. And still, they're like, oh, Trump, Trump, Trump. Dude, the fucking floor is falling out from underneath you. When are you going to go ahead and say, nah, we got to get this motherfucker out? You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I really have to wonder if maybe Kim Kardashian would not have been a better choice. Dude, Kanye West would have been a better choice at this point. <laughs> okay, and that's saying something. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I mean, I mean, this is where the history books are going to have to record that we we were heading for nuclear war and World War Three. And we had Nazis marching in the street in August. OK, like, you know, like this is not over the span of years or anything like that. It's like, yeah, six yeah. months. That was August. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that that wasn't over the course of three years. It was in one month. Yeah, yeah. Along with who's getting fired, who's walking out, you know, who's who's trying to build up support on their side. And you're forgetting the biggest, the biggest story. ABC finally allowed for there to be a black bachelorette. <laughs> That's the biggest story. Hey, we here at ABC aren't racist. That's why we're allowing a colored to be on our big show. <laughs> ABC, not racist. Oh. So watch this new episode of The Black Bachelorette. I mean, The Bachelorette. It, that's the name of the show. Is it sponsored by Pepsi by any chance? <laughs> Anyway, I liked Craig Durham's Nothing But Truth. He would ask the most leading rambling questions. Today yeah. we've got uh, uh, Al Jacobson. He is the founder of Muslim Watch USA. Now I'm going to ask you, what do you think about the current climate in American politics in the sense that America is crumbling under the weight of the liberals and their lies. Do you think that we are headed towards an Armageddon in the sense that, and then like five minutes later, he's done with his question and the guy's just, oh, well, absolutely. It's like, what else can you say? He's just leading you. He's leading the horse to water and grabbing yeah. the back of the horse's head and shoving it under the water. Well, that's yeah. the thing is they ask leading questions and they like to... They like to direct your answers, and that's where, even when like interview liberals and and leftists can and all that, mm -hmm. 
they try to get you to say things out of context. Yeah. And then they try to use it against you with sound bites and shit. So why don't people just be like, who who is it? I had somebody on Twitter, black guy, black actor, called Fox out. Yeah. Uh, his what is his name, honey? Mm-hmm. I want to say something is. But anyways, he was on TV with a white woman, white Fox News anchor. Yeah. And she had said something about Black Lives Matter, and he fucking went off. Oh yeah. Name. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Talk. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna look it up. I'm gonna okay. It's amazing. You gotta watch it. Also, Craig Durham used to be a regular mainstream DJ a long, 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 long time ago. So every once in a while, you tune in, and he's talking about how uh, Muslim. Uh, Islam needs to be eliminated and we need to get rid of the gays. And also, here's a nine minute rant about Austin Powers. <laughs> I loved this fucking guy. Anyway, he's off the air now. They took him off the air. Mm. Craig Durham's nothing but truth. It was a vital part of my drive home. Yes. And they took it off. And I know I have no right complaining about this because I'm not Christian and I'm not, you know. It, it, but God you damn it, could, I love you that could show. write the station anyway. <laughs> they replaced it with um, Abraham Hamilton the Third's uh, show. His name he's is one, my name too. He's one of those uh, minorities who has become famous and rich by being the minority who talks against his own race. Yes. You know, I've talked about this on the podcast. I know that I could be rich at any second if I just become a Republican and tell white people how uh, Mexicans are all rapists and thieves and we should build a wall. I could be rich in a second if I just sell out my own race because that makes uh, racist white people feel better about themselves. Mm -hmm. That's Abraham Hamilton III, and I just freaking hate this guy. He's no Craig Durham, I'll tell you that. Yeah pisses me off so i've been trying to listen to more am radio which should really get an award for still existing i love am radio so much in the mornings uh uh oklahoma city talk radio 1000 yeah they play uh what's his name uh glenn beck and oh my god he's so depressed now it's amazing to listen to Glenn Beck because he's just he knows that he's losing uh, ratings and he's losing stations and people don't love him like he used to. And his media empire is crumbling and you can hear it in his voice like every second of his show. He mm-hmm. seems like he's seconds away from uh, jumping off of the roof. <laughs> but sucker proxy style. He's just going to jump yeah. one day. He's so depressed. And then uh, this just happened like a couple of days ago. On my way home, AM Talk Radio 1000 turns into a call-in show where anybody from Oklahoma can call uh-huh. the and talk about anything. Really? Yeah, so it's a bunch of old people and they're all complaining and pissed off about their about about their life basically and uh the other day i tuned this is like two days ago i tuned in to the show and they go oh well thanks for your call mark we're going to be uh going now to john in shawnee oklahoma which is where i'm from john how uh, how are things in shawnee well things are fine and uh let me tell you i just wanted to touch on what that last caller said about these liberals taking down Confederate monuments. Now, I'm not sure if you realize this, but uh, we have a, a we have a, a, a veterans memorial uh, there in downtown at the town square over by City Hall, and uh, it, we actually have two Confederates that are being memorialized on our veterans memorial. I don't think a lot of people know this. But we've got one uh, northern soldier and one, two southern soldiers whose names are being uh, memorialized on our memorial there. And the the radio host was saying, 
Well, uh, they, are people upset about that? Are you getting uh, protests there in Shawnee? And the guy, the, the caller, went nuts and he said, no, people aren't even uh, being able to, to, to get to the memorial, to reach to the memorial. And I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is all of these pookie man hunters with what? their smartphones and they're they're catching pokemons in front of the memorial. They're blocking the way so no one can get to the memorial because they're all catching pokemons. Wow. Yeah, apparently the the archway of the veterans memorial here in Shawnee is a poke stop. It, it might even be a gym. I'm not sure. So apparently it's pissing off old people that they can't get to their veterans memorial because in front of the veterans memorial is like 12, 20 somethings <laughs> that are all battling and stuff. I don't know. I, do you like it? Yes. Uh, okay. There's a page and then there's a group. There's the Pope on Film Facebook page, and then there's the Pope the Pope on Film discussion group. Yes, the discussion group. All right, definitely fine. Post I'm just on. you can look okay. up your damn self. Okay. Anyway, the the actor I was talking about was D. H. Hewley, and uh-huh. he was on Fox News, and he was it was a year ago. I'm sorry, 2016. He was talking to Kelly, whatever her white bitch is her name now. Yeah, Kelly White bitch. He was speaking to her about the, the police shootings, and he shut the bitch down because she tried to say something about it, and he was like, oh, no, no. You know, it's about cops. Look it up. Uh, it's okay. on Fox News on their website called DH Hewley Speaks Out Against Recent Police Shootings, and she takes offense. She <laughs> fucking takes offense. Like, bitch, like, you aren't a white person. You have no idea what it's like. Yeah. You know? And I don't care if he's a privileged actor. But, yeah, they were interviewing about his book, I guess. I could probably um, look him up on YouTube later. Yeah, you should. And it's fucking hilarious because <laughs> she just, she gets shut down so quick. Yeah. But, yeah, look it up. I will. Watch it and laugh. <laughs> yeah, so, so when you listen to AM radio... It's it becomes crystal clear who is keeping AM radio in existence. It's in the commercials. Yes. It's in the commercials. One thing that I know is that I don't like pain when I use my catheter. <laughs> like, OK, it's obvious who is listening to AM radio. Mm-hmm. Have you thought about quality long term life insurance? <laughs> to make sure your loved ones are secure in the event of your passing, which will no doubt happen very soon. Yes. And uh, there was a commercial the other day that I heard on AM radio, and it was for this play of the epic story of a young boy raised in wealth who led the Jewish people through the desert and gave us the Ten Commandments. It's the epic play of Moses. And it's the, it, this big, huge, massive, like two minute long radio commercial featuring lines from this play and dialogue and music yeah. and sound effects. And it's this epic play. Yes, Moses, <laughs> the epic play that you see to believe. And you can only see it here in Branson, Missouri. (laughs) And I'm like, wait a second. So this commercial is for something that you can only see in one city in America. Yeah. I didn't think that I didn't think that that was um, possible to have like a, a worldwide commercial for something that happens in just one place, you know? Yeah. I am thinking that maybe they got their advertising for the movie in a package. It's not even a movie. It's a play. It's a live. It's a play that happens at some resort in Branson. 
So like it, it worked out it worked out cheaper to sell your ad to a bunch of stations instead of yeah. just the local stations. Yeah. Therefore, therefore, Bunny Wani, I am pleased to announce my brand new commercial. Okay. <clears throat> Complete silence, please. As I start my brand new commercial. What are you gonna fuck? How are you gonna fuck with me? You don't even need to fuck with me, honey. The baby's screaming like crazy. Thanks, Maxwell. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for listening to Daddy. You're getting it out. Okay. Before you start. Okay. Don't you get that? Sure. We're doing you a favor. Sure. Sir. Sure. I was about. Oh, you're taking the baby away? Well, yeah, I mean, because, you know, what else? What are you doing, Bella? What are you doing? Why are you spitting? Why? In a world full of boring white bread storytellers. Bore Thanks for screaming, Bella. That's really awesome. Way to ruin my commercial. No, it's under. I I understand. I'm a dad, so no one has to listen to me. I'm not mom or anything. Boring children with lame stories and complicated crafts. A world where kids are told to put on listening ears and sit Indian style. Seriously, it's 2017. You would think it would have been changed to Native American style by now or something like that, but you know. It is. It is also known as Taylor style. So I think Taylor, that would be Taylor more Swift. than adequate. Okay, huh? Taylor Swift style. She's so hot right now. Yeah. One brave storyteller dared to be different. His name was Mister Steve. This is the vocal font that they use now in every political commercial yeah. as well. Not just, not just, uh, you know, it's gone from being the cheesy movie trailer voice to the we're going to scare you into voting Republican voice. Yeah. His name is Mr. Steve, and he has been entertaining kids for over 13 years. Mm -hmm. And you can see his celebrated story times for free every Saturday at 11 at the Barnes & Noble bookstore in Norman, Oklahoma. And if you can't make it, you can still watch Mr. Steve live every Saturday on the Storytime with Mr. Steve Facebook page. Mr. Steve, funny, entertaining, handsome, and above all, humble. Mm-hmm. 